Today's lesson will be a rundown on weather, weather instruments, and also focusing on humidity. Before we get into the nitty gritty, we're going to be talking about why we have weather. So why do we have weather? And the main reason we have weather is got a lot to do with what's in this picture over here. So think back to your energy transfer notes and kind of what's going on here. I'm talking about energy transfer. That's right, I'm talking about heat coming to the earth in the form of radiation. So weather is a result of the sun heating the earth. All right, what is weather? Weather is defined as our day-to-day -day changes in atmospheric conditions. So just like when you wake up in the morning and figure out what you want to wear for that day, you're going to check the weather channel and it will tell you what it will be like for that day. Sometimes they can give you forecasts into the future as well. All right, and we know uh, from our past unit that all weather occurs in which layer of the atmosphere? That's right, you guessed it, the troposphere. Another important aspect of weather, especially here in the United States, is that it moves from the west coast to the east coast, okay? And that's due to the global wind pattern, which we'll be talking about in our next unit. And this occurs in the United States, like I said. It moves from west to east. So whatever weather patterns here uh, originate in California kind of make their way to the east coast. And that's how we're able to predict weather. So like I was just talking about, in order to predict weather, we need to not only know about the facts about weather, but we need to know how to collect information about weather. So when we're measuring weather to make weather predictions and weather forecasts, we are looking at temperature, wind speed and direction, air pressure, and humidity. All right, temperature, the one that everyone's familiar with, the measure of how hot or cold something is. So you can measure the outside air temperature, you can measure how hot or cold the inside of your house is, you can measure how hot or cold the pot of water is. All right, and temperature is physically measuring the heat energies of particles in the substance. So if they have a lot of heat energy, it means they're moving around a lot. All right, and we measure these with a thermometer. And in science, we want to focus on Celsius. We take all of our temperatures in Celsius. However, in the United States, whenever we're on the Weather Channel or anything like that, we get everything in Fahrenheit. So that's going to be our biggest difference here is now working with Celsius instead of Fahrenheit. Wind speed is measured using an anemometer. So this right here measures wind speed, and it's counting the, the number of revolutions that these cups kind of go around in a circle. And that makes this generator, so it'll tell you how fast it's going. All right, wind direction is used measuring either a wind vane or a wind sock. So typically you see these wind socks at the airport. And this one is actually kind of cool because look, it's got a little anemometer attached to it. Genius. Oh, look, I can put it right back. All right, and then lastly, another cool one. It's called an aerovane. It measures wind speed with the propeller and wind direction with that. Okay, so air pressure. Air pressure is defined as the pressure exerted by the weight of the air above us. And actually, air pressure will uh, push all around us. It'll be exerted in all directions, but we're measuring the force pushing down on us. Typically, low pressure will bring clouds, storms, rain, things like that and high pressure systems will bring us clear skies. Air pressure is measured using a barometer, which is this cool little instrument over here. And if you see air pressure on a weather map, it will have it could have the following units. Most likely it'll have millibars, but it could have inches of mercury, mercury being Hg, or another common way is ATM or atmospheres. Humidity. Most of you guys already know what humidity is. Humidity is just water vapor in the air, and if you remember, water vapor is just water in its gas state. 
All right, so a couple humidity measurements are specific humidity, which is an actual amount of moisture found in the air. So we're talking about how many grams of water are in the air. The measurement that we're going to focus on is called relative humidity. So that's the amount of moisture in the air compared to what it can hold. So it tells us how saturated the air is, and that's expressed as a percent. So we could say 50% saturated. And it's measured using a sling psychrometer, or a psychrometer, which is this doohickey over here. You see it has two little thermometers going on. And uh, here's a little Warwick, another little Warwick that's going to tell you this about how to use it. This here is a psychrometer, and as you know, it's used to measure humidity. So a couple parts to note are that they are two thermometers together, and they are attached to this so you can spin it around. Now, one thermometer has this cloth covering it, that's our wet bulb. The other thermometer does not, that's our dry bulb and it reads our air temperature. So in order to figure out humidity, you need to add water to the wet bulb after you've already recorded your air temperature, and then you swing the psychrometer until the temperature stops changing on the wet bulb. And it will decrease because it's measuring evaporation, so how much water can evaporate into the air which is dependent on how much water is in the air, which is humidity, water in the air. So All right, now you learned how to collect the raw data from the relative humidity. Now we need to know how to actually find the percentage. So I just kind of told you how to get the two temperatures right here. Now I'm going to show you how to find the percentage. So we go outside, we read our dry bulb, which is the one without the cloth, and we get a 14 degrees Celsius. So that is in this column right here. Then we wet our wet bulb with some water, swing it around a little bit, and it stops moving at 10 degrees Celsius. So you notice over here on our uh, x-axis up here that it's not giving us just a wet bulb, it's asking for the difference between the wet and the dry. So guess what we have to do? 14 minus 10 equals what? 4. Okay, so we're looking in this four column, and then we're going to go across in the 14. And so, hey, look, where do they intersect? Right there at 60. So we have 60% relative humidity. One last weather vocab word that has a lot to do with humidity is dew point. All right, do, right, think of do, that stuff that sits on grass in the mornings, is the temperature at which air is completely saturated with water. And guess what happens? Condensation, meaning all that water that's in the air is now going to condense into either rain droplets or little do, little things of do on grass. Okay, so if we're talking about we're looking at the weather channel and we're looking at our dew point temperature. Once our air temperature reaches our dew point, it's going to rain. All right, so what is the relative humidity at dew point? Well, let's give this example. Let's say one day that the dew point is 18 degrees Celsius. Currently, it's 20 degrees, but then it cools to an it cools to the dew point temperature. All right, so first we have to find the difference. So what's 18 minus 18 equals zero. All right, so now we are in the 18 row and zero is the difference. Oh, hey, look, it's 100. And you notice it's 100 for everything. If you're at the dew point, then relative humidity is 100% because it's raining, meaning your air is totally saturated with water.